Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today, it's going to be Contra the Alien Wars for the Game Boy. Um, slightly in color for that matter. We're actually playing this on a Super Game Boy through a Super Nintendo. And this seems to be one of those Game Boy games that takes slight advantage of the Super Game Boy. Not full advantage of it, but slight advantage. Uh, as you can see on the title screen here, it's actually got multiple shades of color. It uses the top part of the screen for the grayish clouds and the bottom part of the screen for your sort of like orangish, you know, fire looking stuff. Uh, and you're gonna see that effect throughout the course of the game. Uh, not that frequently, but throughout the course of the game, it, it does uh, rear its head. Uh, there's also some uh, extra sound effects that are in, um, you know, used here, which I'm pretty sure only play on the Super Nintendo. Uh, which you'll hear later on in the game. There's uh, some very specific moments, so keep an ear out, assuming I've got the volume up high enough. This is a Konami game. I might end up having to mute the audio a little bit because they, they have a tendency of copyright claiming pretty much every video that gets uploaded of their content, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll see. If the volume's up, try to listen for it, and uh, it's really interesting. Uh, so yeah, I actually just recently did a Let's Play of uh, Operation C for the Game Boy, and that is a fantastic Contra game. Uh, I highly recommend playing it. Uh, this, unfortunately, isn't nearly as awesome as uh, Operation C. Uh, what's cool about this game is that it is based on Contra 3 for, uh, from the Super Nintendo. So, like, you know, uh, most Contra games after the NES era didn't have multi-platform releases. It was just, they were their own, you know, uh, uh, contained thing on whatever system they were made for. For instance, uh, Contra Hardcore on the, uh, on the Sega Genesis, or Operation C on the Game Boy. Um, but Contra 3, the Alien Wars for the Super Nintendo, actually managed to get this, like, really trimmed down, uh, port. And actually, in the very beginning of the game, it, you, it actually doesn't really seem all that trimmed down. Like, the level design is very true to the Super Nintendo. Uh, version of the game. However, later on in the game, stages start becoming uh, chopped out altogether, and uh, I think the cutbacks are made a little more apparent. But in the beginning of the game, the first couple stages, if you've played the Super Nintendo version of the game, the Game Boy version is very similar to it. It doesn't play nearly as fast, it doesn't have nearly as many enemies. It is a hell of a lot easier. Um, uh, but it's still faithful, and it's, it's really cool seeing that game on a Game Boy, it's just it's just really cool. Alright, so we're gonna switch over to this C weapon. This basically acts as like uh, grenades. So very powerful weapon. Unfortunately, it doesn't go all the way across the screen. Uh, I did get the uh, the B power up, which acts as uh, a shield for a few seconds. Unfortunately, it wore off. And that's C again. Now, unfortunately, in this game, there really seems to be no way to upgrade your weapons. You can pick up the same weapon twice, but it won't increase, like, the firepower or the size of the shot. Uh, so picking up multiple uh, weapons, unfortunately, it does not do a whole lot. So there you go. On the bottom of the screen, you've got the orange fire effect. Uh, and then the rest of the map is actually a different set of colors, which is pretty cool. And for some reason, I did not hang on to that. That was weird. And I just lost a life for that, unfortunately. So this part right here, you just want to shoot these until they go away, and then hope they don't come up and kill you. It's going to be another fireball thing here, just like in the Super Nintendo version. Again, like I said, if you're familiar with the SNES version, this will feel right at home for the most part, uh, in terms of uh, the level structure and enemy placements and so forth. And unfortunately, I lost those bombs I had. If you hit the... Uh Select, you can use uh, your nukes. And I had like two or three on hand, which uh, I ended up having to waste, unfortunately, because I died. But that was my fault. Alright, so what you want to do here is come here, jump over this, and kind of sit here. Otherwise, you're likely to get hit by those uh, balls of fire that come up. Oh, that was another bomb. I wanted to get that too. Oh well. Not a big deal. This is actually a pretty easy boss. You can literally just sit, uh, sit over here like this for the most part. And that sound effect that the boss just made definitely is not coming from uh, the Game Boy 
That is definitely a reverb Super Nintendo sound effect. Way too clean for a, uh, a uh, Game Boy game. So it's really interesting. If you play this on a Super Nintendo, you do have the benefit of getting some perks, extra perks, that you wouldn't on an actual Game Boy. Um, it's actually kind of interesting. They actually went through the effort to do that on this specific game because it's based on a Super Nintendo game. So it's like you're playing it on a Super Nintendo. Um, getting some Super Nintendo benefits for a game that's already based on a Super Nintendo. It's, it's just weird. It's, <laughs> it's kind of funny that of all games that they decided to do Super Game Boy abilities, um, they, they chose a game that's based on a Super Nintendo game. So kind of, kind of interesting there. Um, so here we go. We've got uh, a top-down level. Uh, again, these were also in Contra 3 for the Super Nintendo. You basically need to find these turret guys and then take them all out. If you can do that, then uh, you basically go to the boss fight. So you can just sort of follow the arrows that are on the sides of the screen. And uh, those will eventually lead you to the turrets that you want. That's a bomb. In the Super Nintendo version of the game, you could actually go to a map, which would sort of like show you where you were. It still had the arrows in that version as well, but uh, you also had a map to work with, which was kind of neat. Uh, unfortunately, you do not have a map in this version. It's not a deal breaker, but uh, it was a nice feature in the Super Nintendo one. All right, so we got some invincibility, which doesn't really last very long, but it's always good to have. It doesn't hurt. I think this might actually be our last turret as well. I guess we'll find out. Yep, that's it. Uh, when it's the last turret, uh, all four arrows appear on the screen. So this guy, you need to shoot all these outer cores. I'm gonna take out these ones up front first. And this guy sort of just moves in at you. You've got this unlimited uh, unlimited plane of movement, basically. So you can just literally keep holding right if you wanted to. But you really need to take out all these cores first, these outer cores. Or I should say, like, shields. That's probably what they are. And then once you do that, the boss becomes vulnerable. Just like that. And that's pretty much it. Off to level three. And I find it really interesting, they actually uh, incorporated a password save system in this version. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the fire. Fire is actually pretty strong in this game. You can also wave it around a little bit too. Now one of the only, uh issues with the soundtrack in this game is that, you know, whereas Operation C took tunes from the NES versions of Contra, the Game Boy has similar sound hardware to the NES. And so the Game Boy can still pull off those old NES tunes and sound very faithful to them. But the Game Boy sound hardware trying to replicate the Super Nintendo sound hardware, unfortunately doesn't really work all that well. And, um... So this game- Oh, I fell again, man. You, you have to keep holding up, apparently. And, uh, I keep pressing, uh, X, thinking it's gonna do something. I keep forgetting I'm on the Super Game Boy, and it changes the color palette when you press X. So this is gonna be a little bit trickier without the flamethrower. It's gonna take longer to kill this guy. You basically need to shoot it from the bottom. Every time it changes to a darker shade, that's when you're actually doing damage. You know, I don't ever remember having to hold up in the uh, the Super Nintendo version. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I do, or I did. I just don't remember. But yeah, for those of you guys that are familiar with the Super Nintendo version of the game, you can really see how faithful this version is in some parts. And I just totally lost another life. I mean, this 
part is pretty much exactly the same. Yeah, it's it's clunky, it's wonky compared to the Super Nintendo one, but you can tell it is the same level. It's the same progression. It's the same bosses, basically. Uh, a couple bosses actually. One of the bosses in this level is actually cut out from the Super Nintendo version. Um, and I'll sort of point that out once we get to it. We're not too far away from it. But you can see that we're really going for like a, a faithful rendition of uh, the Alien Wars, which is I think is uh, commendable. I think it's really neat that uh, they made it work. Uh, I really don't think this place as well as uh, Operation C does on the Game Boy. Uh, in some ways, I also think it doesn't look as pleasing on the eyes. I feel it's a... Uh, it's like muddier, you know? It's like, not everything is as, like, clearly defined. Uh, some of the movement on objects is just more clunky. I guess you could say Operation C is more basic. This is definitely more impressive. Um, but Operation C overall, I just think, is much more pleasing on its on the eyes with, like, some of its more simplistic, uh, artistic choices. Which work in the Game Boy's favor. Um, or to the Game Boy's strengths, I, su I should say. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and... This is a little weird without, like, a spread shot or something. So we got the homing shot, which, unlike Operation C, is not really that great in this game. Uh, I mean, it homes in on enemies, and that's cool, but it's it's also really weak in this game. So you're better off getting something like the C uh, power-up, which I just picked up, fortunately. The question is, do I want the C power-up, or do I want the spread shot? I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the C power-up. Of course, if I got- if I die, I'm gonna be wishing I- well, never mind. I guess it's not really gonna matter. Even if I had the spread shot and died, I'd still be screwed out of a weapon, basically. Alright, let's go ahead and get that bomb. And, uh, you- you kinda wanna be liberal with your bomb usage in this game, because if you die, you lose all of them, so... You might as well use them up while you have them, and, uh... Next time I visit, uh, Contra 3 The Alien Wars on the actual Super Nintendo, I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. Wow, that was... kind of fast, actually. That's the fastest I've ever defeated that guy. So, in the Super Nintendo version, you have to actually fight two smaller, like, android-ish robots. Um, but they cut that out completely of the Game Boy version. And then in the Super Nintendo version, that big head comes out from the... the background. And in this version, you just fight the big head, and that's it, so... Alright, so we've got another, uh, top-down section. You have to be very careful not to touch the edges of these cliffs. They're literally, like, if you touch, like, the pixel, uh, you will fall off and die instantly. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep, uh... I'm gonna keep this weapon, because it's so powerful. These little swirly things will sort of just slow you down. And the sand that you can see here... Uh, ...is basically just acting as like a treadmill. I'm gonna skip that bridge, although the bridge is really neat. I'm gonna go ahead and walk. The bridge will actually play a unique sound effect on the Super Nintendo hardware. You can hear it. It's much louder than the Game Boy sounds. When I first heard that when I was playing this on stream, I was just like, wow, that's... That completely caught me off guard, the fact that they were using the Super Nintendo sound hardware... Um... ...for this Game Boy game. I think that's just a really neat feature of the Super Game Boy. I kind of wish more, uh, Game Boy games did that. Yeah, definitely not a Game Boy sound effect, for sure. Right, let's pick up that invincibility. Alright, we're almost done, and I think... The next level might actually be the last stage. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head.
All right, so this guy basically has uh, sort of like four weak points. Ooh, and I died. That's horrible, man. I actually haven't died at this boss yet. These little eyeball things are its weak points. You basically just need to keep moving, and then that's it. And the reason I failed is because I stopped. And I lost my good weapon, unfortunately. Not a big deal, we still have four lives. If this was Operation C, we would have had a game over already with how many times I died. This is the last level. Okay. Wow, we're at the last level already. It's very short, just like Operation C. Uh, this is a very challenging level, though. I'm gonna need all the lives I can get, so... And the big reason is uh, one of the bosses, and I'll sort of point that out once we get to it. And these guys make a return from the original Contra. Um, and they're also playing another Super Nintendo sound. When they open up their mouths and make a noise. Kind of, kind of cool. Now, I've never actually beaten Contra 3 The Alien, Alien Wars on Super Nintendo, and it is something that, uh, I want to do soon. I think it's gonna be on my to-do list for later this year. Uh, I did try to practice it on stream a couple of weeks ago. Got relatively far into the game. Um, but I've never finished it. It gets very, very difficult about halfway through. And I did not want to pick that up, but okay, whatever. Alright, so this guy is a major pain. And basically what he's gonna do is run across the screen, and then shoot these projectiles up. Now, normally I don't have a problem with patterns like these, but if you look at the projectiles, there's no discernible pattern to them, uh, with like the way they fall. And so what you'll find yourself running into is, just not being able to dodge them. Like, there literally being no room to dodge them at all. Like, that right there, I wouldn't have been able to dodge that. I would have been dead instantly. Um, but one of the problems is that you can only hurt this boss when his mouth opens up. Pretty much right here. And I have to basically just hope for the best. Like that. I got lucky. But I'll take it. When I was playing this on stream, this guy just gave me total hell. I had to beat- I had to continue multiple times. I, f I totally forgot he dashes forward like that too. And we just killed him. That's good. So it's fortunate I had the spread shot when I got to him, because I was able to take him out relatively quickly. If I had just my standard shot like this, I would not have been able to take him out that fast, unfortunately. Actually getting close to the end. And this is it. So this guy has two arms. Which you want to kind of take out first. And watch out for the guys coming in from the sides of the screens. Oops. Ugh. That was... Oh my god, I died again. See, just like Operation C, you have very, very little room to react. It's quite frustrating, actually. And I died again. And you, you're so slow in this game. We're probably actually not going to beat this guy now. Because, uh, I lost too many lives. His second form is a major pain. Uh, particularly without power-ups. I'm just looking at how long this, this part takes. Your main shot is just extremely weak in this game. It's quite a shame because, um... Your main shot in, uh, Contra 3 is actually kind of badass. It's super fast. 
and it's just extremely slow, painfully slow in this version. But like I pointed out in the very beginning of the video, this is one of those sections of the game where it uses different color palettes for certain parts of the screen. So the top part of the screen uses the orange-ish palette. Oh, we ended up beating the game. Cool. And the bottom of the screen uses that greenish tint. So it's a little more colorful than it would be if you were playing on an actual Game Boy. And that's pretty much it. Um... Congratulations, fighting with all your skills. You have defeated the forces of evil and their leader, Red Falcon. Ye freaking ha, I guess. <laughs> so that's basically it, guys. We we just beat Contra the Alien Wars for the Game Boy. It took us about the same amount of time as beating Operation C on the Game Boy. So a relatively short game. Um, I honestly don't enjoy this game nearly as much as I enjoy Operation C. Uh, I kind of find it redundant to play when you have Contra 3 to play on the Super Nintendo. Like, you'd rather just play Contra 3. Uh, but it is still pretty cool. It's, like it's, like I said, I have to give the, the development team kudos for making a portable version on severely inferior hardware that is still quite faithful to the Super Nintendo version. Uh, I don't know if I really recommend playing it today. I had fun experiencing it and learning how to beat it. Um... But it really just doesn't play nearly as well as Operation C. Like, the the attacking is not nearly as fast. Uh, your firepower just seems a little more gimpy in this game compared to Operation C. And, um... Much of the visuals, I also feel, aren't as appealing. Like, they're more detailed in some ways, but not really in, like, a more uh, graphically appealing way. Like, it's like, oh, look what they did with the Game Boy, but it, it kind of looks like crap. <laughs> like, like... I don't know, it's hard to explain. If you play the original Operation C, though, like, the way they did the graphics style in that game, it just works out very well for the Game Boy hardware, and it's very pleasing on the eyes. So... But yeah, I don't want to end this on a negative note. Those are just my thoughts on the game. That's typically what I do in these Let's Plays, is I share my thoughts about the game as well. Uh, but yeah, so there you have it, guys. Contra the Alien Wars for the Game Boy. Um, still a pretty fun Let's Play to do, along with Operation C. Um, but yeah, if you're new to my channel, uh, feel free to subscribe. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video here. And, uh, for all of you guys out there already subbed, thank you as usual. I hope you, uh, enjoyed this series of Game Boy Let's Plays. There's probably gonna be a few more of these to come. Um, and, uh, so yeah. I'm starting to lose track of what I, uh, even want to say now. So, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here, guys. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you soon. Uh, and I'll see you next time. So, take it easy, guys.